Hi, you're with Chandi, Pat Gurli once again, and in this video, we will talk about the calculate function in DAX. Now, growing up as a child, Superman was my superhero. You could replace any of your superheroes here, but the calculate function is nothing less than a superhero. All right, let's just take a look at how that works. On the face of it, the calculate function is seemingly simple, and it's just nothing too complicated here. As the first part of the calculate function, what you will write is an expression. Expression is nothing but a measure, a calculation that you are trying to evaluate. So that's what you write as the first part of the calculate. Make sure that the expression that you're writing as the first part of calculate is a scalar value. It's not evaluating to a table, it's evaluating to a scalar value. After you write the expression, you have the optional input to write filters. Note that these filters need to be as tables. So you can write a function here, you can write a actual table here, but these filters need to evaluate as a table. A couple of things that you need to understand about these filters. Number one, they need to be tables. I just said that they cannot be scalar values. Number two, if they clash with the visual filter, calculate filter, which is your Superman uh, wins. So I will explain that point to you in detail, but just remember this point that if these filters are having a clash or a contradicting with the visual filter, these filters will override that filter in Power BI, right? Last point, calculate filters should not clash with one another. So you cannot write two filters here that are contradicting each other. Ideally should not do that. So let's just take a look at uh, how calculate function works in Power BI, right? All right, I'm in Power BI and we have two very simple tables here. We have a sales table linked to a calendar table through a date column. Let me explain to you real quick what the sales table looks like. So in the sales table right here, we have the transaction ID. This is the unique identifier of the transaction. We have the date of the sale. We have the product ID, the sales amount right here and the channel. In terms of channel, we have three unique channels. We have affiliate, promotion and organic three ways we can sell it to the customer. All right. And here I have created a very simple pivot table in the pivot table. I have channel affiliate, organic and motion against that I have total sales this is nothing but a simple measure that I have written to sum the sales amount of the sales table all right let me write another measure and let's just take a look at the behavior of the calculate function so I'm gonna write let's say affiliate sales measure and I'm gonna say equals to calculate calculate nothing but total sales where the channel is equals to affiliate and I'm just going to close the bracket, press enter. Now imagine if I drag this measure to my pivot table, what am I going to get against affiliate organic and promotion, right? Let's just take a look. Uh, so I'll drag that to the pivot table. And if you're a native Excel user, you might be surprised to see the same value of the affiliate against organic and promotion, because you were expecting that against affiliate is going to show the same value 2368, but against organic and promotion is going to maybe show you the blank because these are not affiliates. So why does the calculate function show Show you the affiliate value against organic and promotion let's just understand the behavior of the calculate function let's just pick up this value 2368 in your calculate function you are saying that i would like to calculate the sales of affiliates only that's what you're trying to say and your pivot table is also trying to apply a filter channel equals to affiliates so both the pivot table is saying the same thing that the channel should be equal to affiliate the calculate function is saying the same thing the channel should be equal to affiliate there is no argument no clash both of them are good so that's why you see the same value right now Next, we move on to organic and let's just evaluate this value. So when your pivot table is trying to apply a filter channel equals to organic, there is a calculate function standing there with its own filter channel equals to affiliate. And when pivot table starts to clash with your Superman, obviously the Superman is going to override the filter that pivot table is trying to apply. So the calculate filter, which is channel equals to affiliate will override any filters coming from the visual which is channel equals to organic. Same happens for here. Pivot table is trying to apply a filter on the channel column, channel equals to promotion, but the calculate function will continue to apply its own filter, channel equals to affiliate. Now, obviously, now that you've understood that uh, the calculate function filter can override the filter of the pivot table, obviously I will never ever create a pivot table like this. So where all it can be helpful, this behavior of overriding the filter that pivot table is trying to apply, where all it can be helpful, let's just take a look now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now calculate what is the contribution of each channel to the total right so what I'd like to do is against the affiliate I don't really want the affiliate sale but I rather want the total sale and then I can divide these two values affiliate by total sales and then I can get the percentage contribution so rather than calling this as an affiliate sale let's just call this as total sales or let's just call this as percentage contribution which is anyways what we're trying to calculate so here in the filter that I'm trying to write here I'm gonna write a function name all 
and I'm gonna write the channel here. So I'm gonna say, hey, why don't you remove all the filters from the channel column and consider all the three channels. So we have three channels as affiliate, organic and promotion. Consider all of them to calculate total sales. You can also write a remove filter here. All will also work absolutely fine. Now, if I press enter, pivot table is trying to apply a filter for affiliate, but your calculation is trying to remove the filter from affiliate and get all the values, which is nothing but your total. So now that you have total across everywhere, what you can do is, you can use the divide function and divide your total sales with your calculate function which is your total and that is going to give you the contribution convert that into percentages and we are good to go let's just take a look at another practical example where you're going to use the behavior of the calculate function to your benefit so i'm just going to copy this pivot table and put it on the left hand side and in the calendar table i will get my year and the month so year here and the month here close that close that and i will real quick expand my pivot table all right so that's what we have we have a uh, year the months and the total sales now what if i'd like to compare the sales of january of 2012 over sales of january of 2011 i'd like to find our growth over last year right so let's just see how can we do that so i'm going to come here in the table and create a new measure and i'm going to create a new measure as sales last year all right so i'm going to say equals to calculate calculate nothing but my total sales but if i leave the function as it is this is going to calculate three four five five once again in this filter context 2012 and jan but i'd like to calculate sales of 2011 against the month of jan here against 2012 here so i'm going to use the function same period last year i'm going to put the calendar date inside of this and press enter what this is going to do is when the pivot table is trying to apply the filter one for january and the other one for 2012 it's going to remove the filter for 2012 and apply the filter for the last year that means i'm trying to go ahead with the same period i'm good with that but i'd like to apply the filter for the last year not the current year press enter and let's just drag this formula down and against 2012 of January, I have the last year sales. Now, obviously, I can do this by this and minus one and I can find out the growth percentage. So let's just do that real quick. So total sales divided by uh, the calculate function of the last year, which is giving you the last year number minus one is going to give you the percentage. And obviously you can convert that to a percentage sign to get to the answer. Now, obviously this is going to give you infinity because at times you may not have the last year number, which is your denominator. At times you may not have the current year number, which is your numerator. So this, this might give you an error. So let's just try to fix this function completely. So what I'm going to do is declare a quick variable here. So variable ly sales. That is my last year sales. And then I'm gonna say return. I'm gonna say equals to if. Now, if both the values are present, that means the total sales is present, not equal to blank, and the last year value is present. So last year sales is present, not equal to blank. Only then I'm gonna perform the growth calculation. So what is my growth calculation? Growth calculation is nothing but my total sales divided by my last year sales minus one. That is my growth calculation. And this absolutely works fine. Technically, this is the only calculation that we are trying to perform. The if is only the barrier where the calculation stops in case the numbers are not there. All right, so that was all about the calculate function, the basics and the behavior of it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.